If you just realize that you may be doing too much in your workouts, in other words, you need to scale back, do so in this order. First, scale back intensity. If that doesn't work, scale back volume. If that doesn't work, then scale back the frequency. That's the order most people should scale back when they're trying to reduce the total load on their body. Do you have a, um, a rec uh, intensity? I think we all agree for sure is number. You got to be first. Yeah, that's Just make your stuff right? easier. Yeah, intensity first. So, and I think that almost always, honestly, solves the problem because I think you can handle the sa the same volume. Uh, I mean, technically, you can make it. You can reduce the intensities to a point. You can almost solve for all, all, any of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's like the the for yes. sure. Now, let's say you do have somebody because you you recognize that they're they're overdoing it volume yeah. wise too. It's just like that's just too much. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for you to be doing 52 sets a workout yeah. six days a week or whatever. Is there a a typical because volume is 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 the you know uh, total of sets reps times weight. Is there just a, a an easier thing to tell a client because you tell a client volume the average person doesn't know what, the, what no, that means. They have no idea. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean? So do you just go like what I want you to do is look at your workout and cut out like the a set of a every set, exercise. Yeah, is that is that an easier way to do it? I go I, so I used to do I used to cut down a third of the sets, but now I go down to half. So uh, whenever when I would identify with my clients that that they were maybe overdoing it or whatever, I would always back off half the volume because. When you're coming out of overtraining or overdoing it, you have to make up a little ground. It's not like you just go back to the appropriate volume. You got to give the body enough time to catch up. So I would always go to half. So I said, whatever, you know, if you're doing, you know, uh, 15 sets in a workout, well, I only want you to do seven or eight at most, you know, type yeah. of deal. Well, plus then you can gauge whether or not that was really the case. That's right. Yeah, so That's right. Otherwise, yeah, it's just like you're barely kind of moving and then, the needle. And then frequency, like, I mean, you could work out a little bit every day for often, not for everybody, but oftentimes um, helps with the recovery process. Yeah. Just a little bit of movement. Yeah, yeah. You know? How, how often do you think people um, are, are too extreme in both directions? Meaning uh, inconsistent. So they yeah. they don't train. They missed ah seven days in a row, oh. and then they train a day, mm -hmm. and they try to over, over try to correct. Yes, then they they oh, yeah. over intense intensity or over volume, and then they miss again five days in a row. Then they do it again, or maybe they get three days in a row of like super high intensity. Then they you just described most people that yeah. have trouble staying consistent. I, I mean, I would say athletes are most guilty for that. If you've been like long periods of time without training consistently, then you want to get back into it. It's like full blown like full acceleration and and not really like a gradual approach at all. I, I bring this up because I think I think this gets misunderstood when we talk about this sometimes because I think we we're all, we're always kind of preaching this message about people yeah. like over applying intensity and telling them like start less, build on it, stuff like that. And I think the the average person in their head goes, yeah, but I haven't even I haven't been consistent for Good even point. 30 days, Sal. So I can I go super hard. Yeah, so I, I definitely, yeah. I'm not overdoing it. No. I, I, have no, I only train six days this week, no, this that's month. The, uh, yeah. That's the irony. The irony is, or the, the the what's interesting about this is the the more consistent you are, all being appropriate, yeah. okay, the more consistent you are, the more volume you, can ten, you tend to be able to handle. In other yeah. words, think of it this way. Fit people can do more and be okay with it than people who aren't fit. So if you're not working out much- yeah, The body's more conditioned to be able to handle that kind of the, load. The damage on one intense set, you take somebody who's sedentary, you take someone off the street who doesn't work out at all, and I, date, I do a, a set of squats to failure, one, we've overdone it. Yeah. And they'll know, they'll feel it yeah, for a couple of days. for a few days, yeah. Just one set, you know? So um, think of it, the way I would always explain it, and I've said this on the show often, is you think of the body- improving as a form of adaptation, which it is. And it's no different than your skin getting darker in response to the sun. So if you never go out in the sun and you want to get a tan, you don't go get a sunburn. That's not going to give you a tan. It's going to give you blisters. You got to expose yourself appropriately. I used to think that. Regularly. Did you really? <laughs> that you get a sunburn you get there Yeah, faster. I'm like, oh yeah, because you know, being in the <laughs> summer, you know, I was always like, it was always at the very end of the summer, I, I had like a little bit of a shade darker. It wasn't even <laughs> by like- By the end? Yeah, by the very end. I'm like, man, if I really, if I, maybe if I get ahead of it this time. <laughs> And then it just, it gets to the point where I'm like, just red, pink all over with like white freckles instead of oh. uh, brown ones. Did you, I did probably you, have skin cancer. Did you get, I was going to say, <laughs> did you get sunburn every summer? I mean, it, it was likely I would be sunburned first thing. I, I learned probably about the third or fourth time I've done that, that I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm not a like, good method. wait at least, you know, so like, yeah, it, it does it naturally. My, my, my mom, so although my mom's Sicilian, she's, she's light complected. So I, I get my complexion from my dad. 
and she, we we went to Sicily years, long time ago, and we all went to the beach. And she for she didn't put sunscreen on her feet, but she put them everywhere Ooh. else. And we oh, were outside. And my mom's like, she could be pretty white. Oh, blisters, dude. Yeah, Ugh. she got blisters on Ugh. her feet from the from the sunburn. So. Yeah, but again, you don't you get, get bad. You don't get tan any faster, and it's just like that with exercise. It's the right dose will get you there the fastest, and that's what people understand. But but I wanted to list these in order of importance because people, when they think of scaling back, the the what's interesting is when someone says, oh, I need to like reduce things because I might be overtraining. They typically don't reduce the intensity. They just do less, but yes. they still apply the same intensity. That's why I brought that uh -huh. point up because yeah. I think a lot of times people hear us say that and they don't think that this could be them. Because, intensity does the most damage. Because they haven't been consistent for even a month. So they think, oh, that's not me. I'm not overdoing anything. But it's mm -hmm. like, actually, you are. You're, you're, a, you're a bigger culprit of this because not only are you not being consistent with the days that you yeah. show up, the few days a month you do show up, you overdo it. And it's just like you're spinning your wheels at that point. It's like your body is just trying to recover. And then you add in the in another variable. Those tend to also be the people that like, oh, that's the week they cut way back on their calories. Mm -hmm. So they they over they overtrain, they underfeed them, which uh, makes uh, you more susceptible. So the recovery is even yeah, yeah. So the re recovery sucks. They probably didn't build any muscle from it, and it's just like I mean, and you wonder why so many people get so frustrated and go like why like yeah. and, and and that's why i feel like there's such a divide in our society of like people that work out fitness people and then people mm. that have just chosen like i don't want to do all that yeah like because yeah. <laughs> like, it sucks yeah, it hurts a, it sucks it doesn't work yeah. i worked out real hard i gotta I sacrifice so much you gotta put so much effort in for such little results yep. it's like it sounds terrible but i mean if, if i were given a challenge and someone were to say um what's the fastest way to over overtrain someone intensity I could overtrain somebody with intensity very quickly. With mm -hmm. volume and frequency, it would take a lot longer. The body can handle those two things with appropriate intensity I, at much higher levels. I also think it's an area that even, even with lots of experience and expertise in this field, it's still a, a tough thing to gauge. Mm -hmm. it, it, like, I mean, I don't know. I don't know who out of us. I'm probably, I would think I'm one of the more inconsistent ones out of all of us, like it, at least at this period of, of my life and so like that as far as like consistently training in the mm -hmm. in the weeks. And so I have a lot of these like, oh, I, I didn't train for a week, you know, and, and coming back to it. Now I haven't gone very long, like, like weeks or months of not getting any sessions in, but literally just falling off my, you know, my normal volume of let's say three times a week down to once or twice or having a week off and coming back it's a trip. I just, so I had, I just came off of that a while ago and I was like, you know what? Like, I'm just not in the mood to get after squats today. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do some stuff I haven't done in a long time. Real, real low intensity. Like I got this suspension trainer. I put it to a box real low and I just did, I lowered myself. Nice full range of motion. Yes. Oh, I mean, you got like, a sore One leg at a time, just sit down. five reps, you know, on each side. And you got sore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I literally did three sets of that, five and yeah. five on each side, support from the suspension trainer, body weight, pistols down real slow, getting up. And I was just really just concentrating on technique. And I'm like, and I'm like, okay, let's, we'll see how I, and I was sore. Than now I wasn't crippling. It was, it was, I, I thought I did a pretty good job of gauging that. That's all you needed. Though. But that's all I needed. Yeah. And that was my point is like, wow, like so many more times I would have walked in and been like, ah, I'll just do like three sets yeah. of 225 for, you know, eight and that'll yeah. be fine. That's the majority so of the time is way less than you think. Yes. It's yeah. so funny too. And if people only knew like the, the best progress I, I ever make with my workouts, and this was when my clients do, was when I didn't get sore. When I'm training hard and I'm not getting sore, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm hitting the right, yeah. the right amount. When it took me a long sore, time to understand that. It took me a really long time. I thought it was, I thought I wasted my time. Yeah. I, for the longest time, I measured the success of the workout by how sore I was. And if I didn't get sore from that, then I was You wasn't. know, the first time I figured that out was when a long time ago, I was researching, um, you know, bronze era, you know, strength athlete workouts. And I noticed they all trained and they all looked phenomenal. This was before steroids, before supplements. And I noticed they all trained full body, all of them, three days a week. That was a routine. And the feats of strength that they did were just unbelievable. Yeah. And then really? I read a and then I read a book called Dinosaur Training, and then I read some other stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try full body three days a week instead of my what at the time I was following like your you know chest day, back day, whatever. And so that's what I did. And I had to scale the intensity down because I'm training everything three days a week. I couldn't go to failure or whatever like I was before. And so I started doing it. And I remember like I would do like a bench press on Monday, and Wednesday I'm gonna do bench press again. And I'd show up and I'm like, well, I'm not that sore, but let me see. I just did it two days ago. I wonder if I fully recovered five pounds stronger. I remember like that first week I got stronger so fast and I went, uh-oh, mm -hmm. I think I might've been doing this wrong the whole time. Yeah. You know? I mean, I think that was part of, you know, going all the way back to the, you know, the inception of this business. And when you first sent over Maps Anabolic, 
it was the the limited amount of volume and the simplicity of the program that I was so like, oh, this is what this is. I was just at that point in my career where I was starting to figure that out, like less is more mm -hmm. s sticking to a handful of really good exercises, not doing a ton of volume on it, hitting it three times a week. And that was like the, the way you had laid the program out. And I literally was just coming to that conclusion myself at that period of my training and I'm like, this is like, nobody is talking about this every, like, it's the opposite of this right now. And I think that's why we had so much success is so many other people were in that same mind mindset yep. of training. And then I guarantee, and how often do we hear this when we first would release the program? Mm -hmm. like, oh, it's not enough or this, or like, all the time. Uh, yeah. Oh, this isn't enough. Like, it was like, oh, how did you follow it? Yeah. No, I don't even need to. I could tell this is not, or I did a workout. It's like, dude. Follow it for one month. That's all I, all I needed was 30 days from you. Give me 30 days of training like that, trusting the process, trusting the amount of volume that's in there, the boring exercise on there, and the proof was in the pudding. Mm -hmm. And then again, I think that's the people saw the result and they saw so much results from that. I think that's where a lot of the credibility that we have yeah. and, and then the business was really, truly built on that. You know, yeah, that? I remember those quotes, mm -hmm. those comments was so funny. Hey, <laughs> by the way, that study you sent me, I, I read it on babies and eggs. Oh yes. And egg, oh, I'm egg. so glad you're bringing that up. So, um, super fascinating. Ba well, babies that eat eggs. Yeah. Oh, I, so I saw an article first. Sorry, let me look at the ages. Uh, let me get the ages. Correct. So I, so I said, I found this, I came across this article that said that uh, they, they did this thing, they tested this, and Sal can correct me with this real study said, but I just saw the first article, and it said that they did a group of babies that they all they did, the only variable that changed was they gave them one egg a day, one more egg mm -hmm. a day, and they followed these babies around. And within, I think, a year's time, yep. they saw a 10 to 15% increase on IQ. Yeah, difference. Wow. Difference. What? IQ difference. Yeah. That's significant. That's, that's significant. <laughs> that's significant. And that's the only that's variable like that's- average to smart. That's the only variable that changed. It's yeah. probably, now they say it might be, they had higher levels of DHA in their brain. So this is a fatty acid that you'll find in, in hmm. good quality eggs. But I think it had more to do with the choline, personally. So I, I have a different theory. Is it called nature's multivitamin? Well, oh, so, yeah, so well. I have, I think, and it's not necessarily the opposite of what you're saying. It's just that I think it highlights how under how nutrient deficient we are yes. as yes. a society yes. and how much processed stuff that we feed our kids. Yes. Yeah. And just by giving one of the most complete foods in an egg, yeah. at that, just because it has a nice balance of protein, healthy fats inside there, because of that... I think that showed such a significant. If you want to give your baby a few things that's going to give them some like incredible nutrient density, you give them fish roe, and trust me, babies will actually eat this. We give this to my son when he was little, my daughter. So fish roe is amazing. Uh, what we're talking about now, whole eggs, incredible. Red meat, amazing. Um, and uh, avocados are good as well. Those foods right there, like they'll get so many nutrients from those that they lack and all the foods that... If you ever look at baby food and, and stuff that you know that are designed yeah, for yeah, babies, yeah. they're not very. Good. No, it's just a fortified no, nutrients I mean, and sugar. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah. like it, it's not like real whole foods mm -hmm. from real natural sources. And I think that's what it, I think it's. I think a lot of people probably saw that and think that there's something magical about eggs. I think it's less. I think that's less of the point. I think more of the point is like we feed our babies so much of this like kind of processed fast food, quick frozen type stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're missing. And, and because an egg is so complete, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's why you saw it. But I mean, wow. I mean, super motivation for Katrina and I, like after I'm like, we're hard boiling a bunch of eggs oh, and we're going to get, we're going to like eat them together as a family and see if I can get Max to like I tell you what crave, sucks, crave a whole egg a day. What the sucks IQ for us like is, uh, say what? It was the IQ that increased? Yeah, yeah. up to 15 points. So, yeah. so Aurelius, we've been giving him eggs since he was forever, always. Unfortunately, my baby, uh, my one year old, if she eats eggs, she gets a little bit of eczema. So we can't give her eggs. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm trying to look so we so have, I tried in sardines, I'm trying different things. Now but. stay with that too, because we had that same issue with Max. So we went away from eggs and then and then we've not that long ago reintroduced it back. And he seems to be fine now. Good. Early on, yeah, they often uh, outgrow. It. Yeah, early yeah. on, we noticed that he was getting these little rashes when yeah. everything. So we're like, ah, oh, shit. And he didn't really like it that much. Yeah. So we went away from that for a long time. And then came back, I don't know how many, a year or two later and reintroduced it. Now, unfortunately, I haven't, we haven't trained him consistently enough to where that's what he, I want him to crave that for breakfast mm. is the goal. And if I can't get him to crave it for breakfast, then I want to see if I can encourage him to eat hard boiled eggs throughout the day or something. So yeah. that's the goal. Well, what right we now. did with the three-year-old is, is we, we, now this doesn't work for my baby, but for our three-year-old, we parsed out egg whites from the egg yolks. Cause it's it, when we first gave him eggs too, there was a little bit of a reaction Oftentimes it's the white though, not the yolk. Mm. It's because the white is in the, the theory. Well, the white has antibodies in it because it's mm. it's it's 
basically put in there to protect the yolk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if somebody reacts to eggs, uh, if they don't react, if they if they do react to eggs, sometimes it's just the white and not the yolk. Interesting. So something else. Well, that eat. used to be you. You used to always eat all the. Yeah. Now I can eat them all, all fully, but back in the day, yeah, I would just eat the yolks. You guys would see me. Yeah. <laughs> Nine oh, or yeah, ten. Yeah. <laughs> Over easy eggs. I just get out there. Okay. Yeah. Today's giveaway is MAPS Powerlift. To enter to potentially win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on your, off your notifications. Sorry, turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, this month's sale is MAPS Anabolic half off and MAPS Anabolic Advanced also half off. So they're both 50% off. You can find them both by clicking on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Speaking of eggs, this may this this reminded me of something. Doug was going over some numbers with me, <clears throat> his testosterone, and how, first off, I don't even like talking about this. I know. I know. <laughs> Why not? So Adam? much testosterone yeah. is ridiculous. Deflating. I don't yeah. understand. I think it's your generation because I think we're on our final years of people thinking that we're younger than Doug. Yeah, I think I think we're in our last. This is our last couple seasons, bro. He's like naturally on gear. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. not so much, I'm not taking. Well, okay, so tell gear. tell me what, so, how high were they? So, his, your, what was your highest reading before you started using the 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 Juve regularly? Because you were you were doing you had HCG, and I think you were supplementing with boron. Right. So a couple of years ago, I tested, I think at 1,080. That was like a peak. Total. And that was at a time I was really working on my um, testosterone levels. Yeah. And then back, I just have some notes here. Back in November, I did another test through Transcend. My testosterone was 655. So it had dropped. It had dropped. By the way, 655 is still high. So yeah, but it's still a nice level. Now, do you can you connect? Like, was it you put less effort towards it? I was just wasn't paying a lot of attention to it. Okay. Um, and you were probably stressing him out a lot or something. Probably getting stressed out a lot. <laughs> actually, sure. I think that was Sal around that time. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> was, I think so. Yeah, there was a time there. I was like, yeah, I think uh, pretty, it was a lot of Sal actually. Right? Pretty knotted Ping-pong up most around. of the day. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm not stressed. For <laughs> but <laughs> one thing. So there's been a number of things I've done. Okay. Yeah. One thing is I've been working with Transcend, yeah. uh, so I, I'm using HCG, okay. 25 units twice a week. Right. Now, that'll raise your testosterone by itself. Yes. I'm using DHEA. Okay. I'm using, yeah, boron. Yeah, yeah. Um, But one of the things I have done consistently is use the red light almost every single day. Yeah. So I start my morning. Again, this is another stress reduction thing that I'm doing right now is I get in front of my red light, you know, just totally naked. And I sit there and I do like a 10 minute meditation. Oh, kind of wow. Great bring, combination. Yeah. Just bring myself down a little bit. Uh, also sleep is another area I've been really working on. So your uh, highest levels before were like close to 1100. Close to 1100. And now since you've been doing this, you just came so I, back. So I just had a test blood taken on uh, February 23rd. Listen I just got number. my results. My testosterone is at 1381. Bro. That's that's more than mine from synthetic testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that make you angry? And I'm, yeah, and I'm taking a healthy <laughs> dose. Too, you got so you? much testosterone. Wow. Can you give us some? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Sure. But the, give but, me some of your muscle. Dude, but the, <laughs> but the, the red light therapy, I think, made that yeah, difference because that's well, the one thing that I would changed. say that's one of the things, and, yeah. and I really have been working on my sleep. Yeah. So I'm not going to say, oh, that's the only thing I did. But they, all, they all help each other, though. They do help yes. each other, yeah. Yes. I'm saying? So it's just like... So I've gotten... I've had people send me their numbers from using just the red light, and they'll see a a nice 10% to 20% increase. Oh, I remember when, so mm-hmm. I know Ben Greenfield used to talk about it. So did our friend Metabolic Mike. I remember- Oh, his he, went up a lot. He did like a controlled like test on himself, right? Like yep. he literally just, that's all he changed is a variable. Mm-hmm. And he went, I forgot, I think I want to say oh, it was he, like- He just he, shined like directly on his balls. Yeah, like, naked yeah. in front of it, right? He he I, he went from like two or 300 something to like six or 800. Yeah. I can't, yeah, he By the significantly. Way, pe- people, Justin's not making a joke. That's literally- no, that's how you do the, it. <laughs> because the well, that's light, what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. the red light goes through the body. Uh, it, it affects any cell that it, that it touches. The mitochondria in that cell start to operate better. So if it touches the lighting cells, which are in the, the testicles, they'll produce more testosterone, more sperm, more whatever. You shine it on your skin. It makes the skin rejuvenate. You shine it on your scalp. You regrow hair. You know, that kind of stuff. So I seriously, pretty wild. I wish, I wish Juve would do like a, some sort of a home light system. Like, what do you mean? Use their technology and you'd be like, how Like sick? a pair of underwear that's got no, 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 no. Like, I've told you guys before, like, <laughs> like 6, 7 p.m. and you flip it. Yes. Like, I wish, oh. I, I wish I could have it. Like, I wish my whole bathroom was that. I know. Like, I, I don't, there's no reason I need regular light in my bathroom. Totally. I, I, like, so that every time I get up in the morning, I just hit my, my light. Which is there. Yeah. And I'm showering and I'm brushing wow. my teeth and like, 
I'm just getting it that yeah. way. Wow. Because the, the one thing that, yeah, when, if I'm ever inconsistent, it's yeah. just having a, ru- a routine of going over. Uh, frequency with it wins. Yeah. yeah. As, as stupid as it may sound, it's like, I know, to, to discipline myself, to carve out 10 to 20 minutes to sit in front of it. Like I, I've done pretty good. Like right now, the, the the new thing I'm doing is Max and I, a lot of times we bat, take a bath or at the same time, right? And afterwards, him and I will all turn it on and sit in front of it and we play and we mess around yeah. and we get dry and just like I'm just kind of hanging out in front of it. But I, I'm just, that's what I'm doing right now. Then it'll be inconsistent for a while. If it was in my light system to where my bathroom lights were all the infrared lights like that, yeah. I would totally pay for oh, that. Yeah. I'd, in I'd a shower. That too. I, yeah. I, I pretty shower. much do that in my bathroom though. Mine's hanging on my door. And I usually take a shower with that, just that light on only. So that's what and I was doing. So, and, and I, I wanted to look up. I don't know if Sal, how close you, would, you have to be. Well, so, so I do the meditation right up against the different. panel. Yeah. So, so that's I'm what is most away, effective. Like so that, that's why. Okay. So I have the I have a big glass shower, mm-hmm. and I had it I had it mounted up outside the shower, shooting through the glass on me. Yeah, you're now probably it, losing. I you know I, I was. I think you're probably losing. A I gotta be right. Yeah, I, gotta I, it's gotta be through that thick glass. I gotta be. Lo- yeah. I mean, it feels like I'm getting it, but I can't tell. Right. And so I mean, you're getting some. I know better. That's what kind of the, the, the attitude I had was like, listen, at least I'm doing. If I was doing, I was doing it every time I took a shower, and I was twice a day, right? Yeah. So I was like, mm-hmm. at least I'm getting the frequency of the red light. But that's what I mean. Like, there's a market there, Juve. If you're listening, like to create some sort of home light system. That you know you that can, they're mini. Have you seen? You've seen their mini, the yeah. little one. That mm-hmm. oh, right there. That one. So that one, everybody in my family loves. That's the one every, because they put it on their face. I like the fact that it's so. Yeah, so my small. sister loves that because yeah. she works for the company. She's yeah, on the, the computer, computer uh, yeah, so she just sets it right. She that. writes her next to her computer screen, mm-hmm. so it's blasting her in the face while she's working on the computer screen. Wow. Yeah, so I think that's a awesome. that's a good way. to do Hey, that. I want to ask you because you brought this up, and I said let's save this for the podcast. Good discussion. You were talking about washing your car and using like a foam. Oh, like the, the foam spray. Oh that yes. you do the so, whole car. Yeah. With. So and I have an int- I have a, a comment on it. First off, t- talk about this foam thing that you're using. Yeah. So it just sprays foam. Yeah. So your- if you if you ever I don't even know if you guys have ever paid attention to our car wash guys, right? When they go out there and clean the cars, like they're like the the companies that you hire to do that, they have all these toys. And I and I would watch and I'd have them come to my house and do my stuff and I had been watching them do it. I'm like, man, that's sick. Like I it's like that. you know, it reminds me of uh, when we saw that guy use uh, lasers in the middle to uh, level everything and like easily hang up. Oh yes. yeah, these I was like Pfft. laser levels. Yes, I had lasers when I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. doing construction. Bro, I was the same. Hey, <laughs> plumb line. Hey, the hey, I was the yeah. same way too. I've been trying to hang pictures up with yeah. freaking rulers and all kinds so of crazy. Exactly where the studs are and everything. Yeah, I'm like, dude. Yeah, you sit up in the center of the room, mount it. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, Yeah, like that. It's like that for car washing. It's, I mean, and what it is. So I, the part that I like least about washing my own car is the, uh, the, the soaping part is going back to the bucket, doing a panel back to the bucket, doing a panel. And then it's like, that's taking you 15 minutes just to get that one side of the car. So you, you don't want to dry. So you rinse it off and then you start over and there's, and you kind of go do that whole, this thing, it, it's, it's got a canister that hooks up to the pressure washer. That's got it the mixes soap. in the soap. Yeah. yeah. And so it, you literally like, it looks like you spray paint the car. I mean, you just, and then it, a thick just coat of all over it. And then you come back and you, you hit the whole car. So it's like, yeah. it saves me so much time. It's, I don't know. There's something about it. I like Such an old guy conversation. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. So here's this is like the, the barbecue, hey, hey, barbecue, <laughs> barbecue directions. You guys and, have found and, this dad hack. Yeah. It's amazing. Hey, dude. you know, yeah. you know, it was what, at the hardware store. I, I haven't washed my car by myself, like personally. I haven't washed my own car probably for two decades. Wow. Hey. Easily. But you That's don't even, one of the first things I outsource is have someone else do it for Because you don't even care, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't oh, even, I'll do it. I'll get a good oh, job. No, 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 no. I mean, like, you don't you don't even care about cars. That's what I'm saying. When you wash your car, you're kind of like, oh, Yeah, you know, I'm you into it. you talk to your car? Like, yeah. No, I don't talk like to it. Hey, baby. But there is something. So, okay, we, we you know, for the <laughs> audience, right? So, <laughs> we all get our cars washed. So clean now. Okay? We all get our cars washed. Get that tail. And I, and I have the car guy come to the house. And I actually, there was a part of me that was missing it. Like I, mm-hmm. I like, there's a part you that- You missed washing your car? Yes. Yeah. It's I, it's therapeutic for Bro, me. I, do, I do it I'm, sometimes yeah, with my like, kids as a yeah. chore. Like on a warm evening? Yes. It's, it's so nice to wash your I, car. I, I put my, I, I, I roll my speakers I, out. I cannot connect to this at all. I roll to my speakers out to the garage <laughs> or, or I have headphones on and I go yeah. to town, dude. I, and I wash it. Yeah. It's also escape from the wife. It's well, like you're not even married, Doug. Doug. What are you escaping from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just out meditating with the, uh, yeah. So here's my oh, little car wash toy. Oh, it's here. A leaf blower. Yeah. When I you I get it done, dry. Yeah, yeah, dry it with a leaf blower. 
And then I take a towel and just do the, yes. uh, the rest of it. You yeah. guys gas crazy. powered? No. No, I have electric I have electric one. one. Ah. That is a massive hack because one of the other headaches. I gas power fucking everything now. Do you really? Yes. <laughs> hey, one of the it other headaches of washing the car is if right after it's all beat it up, if it takes 40 towels because they yeah. soak up all the water, or you have to have one of those, like, you know, you know whatever. ShamWow. ShamWow type of towels. Or you use a blower and you blow all the heavy water off and then mm -hmm. you come back and you touch now it. You are so passionate yeah, about I this am, right now. I am. I'm yeah. so glad I asked you. I'm about. into it. I like, I, and he like, gets out the McGuire's wax and I have it all. Right? And I miss, you wax your own car? I miss, yeah, I have all that. So I missed it. I missed that because we were paying for someone to do it. Yeah, and there, obviously, the there was ride. a nice luxury to having someone do it. And then I'm like, you know what? Like, Half of the appreciation of me having this machinery that I like, because you know I'm into cars, is just like, yeah, I, I, I like to take care of my stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My cars are all like, the only you know car that's trashed? My wife's car. It's the, only, it's the only car that's, that's the only car that's not. The mom it, wagon, dude. It's oh, got all man. The wrappers. Just, and, and I just let go of caring. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what? Hey, mom that's cars are always dirty like socks yeah, and yeah. everything. And in yeah. her defense, she's got the little one in her car all yeah. the time. I don't have that. Right. So, of course, like she's got, and she's every Chino time dust, to yeah. and from, he's, yeah, he's got oh. stuff, but. I can't deal with it. Like, I have to have my- I put my son in the yeah, back I'm sometimes, the and he thinks it's funny to like to hit the controls with his foot in the back. I'm like, oh, oh son. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're just a troublemaker, bro. Oh, he's, he's on just, fire, He's dude. just testing he, he all the time. Yeah, if he finds buttons. He yeah, is like, on this is a button. fire, dude. So, okay, so you, you always make fun of me of these types of things. Like, you don't have like- what are the things that... What are you trying to say, bro? Yeah, okay. <laughs> you don't know that that's you, Sal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. No, 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 not that part. Oh, I mean, okay. uh, like, the, the going back to the car wash thing oh, for okay. me. Like, you got to have some things like that, right? That you... that you. I know I'm Justin's his guitar, right? Justin yeah. will go down probably yeah, yeah. downstairs in his basement for two hours by himself. I didn't want to say it because I'm embarrassed. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I want to know. What is I'll, it? Supplements, bro. I'll prepare, like, my formula... For the morning. No morning. way. Oh, yeah, dude. Do you still make up your own versions all, all and time, concoctions? Bro. All the time. With like, because I know you used to it's, like it's, order like just this raw material. Yeah. And then you'd get it and. Oh, yeah. I still do that. So do it's you. It's not a good, it's not a good obsession. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Now I'm curious. So like now. I'm going to work out tomorrow and if I get this much sleep and then I'll go stimulant heavy here or. Oh, my God. I'm you go really heavy on the nitric oxide. Of course yeah. you do. Why didn't yeah. I think of that? Of so course I'll do the you right do. Oh, I need, I need more of an adaptogen feel for this workout. And so I'll combine. Oh so I'll have like <laughs> if you if you if you come to my house in, in the kitchen because I, I wake up uh, Four. before Jessica does right yeah. I, I feed the baby I'll bring her coffee and then I take care of uh, the, our three year old then she'll come down and I'll typically leave to go work out and so when you come you'll see I'll have a little cup prepared with like multiple different types of pills and coffee and it changes. Them. And it changes, yeah. It's not always the same. No, there's a, there's some cer certain staples in there. Of course, like vitamin D and yeah. probably some of the staples. Well, not, not for pre-workout, but like, uh, you know, caffeine will always be in there in some some way, shape, or form. But okay. then there's other things. That also okay, so you have, because I know you also carry your <laughs> weird. you carry Stop, your supplement bro. purse. See, it's embarrassing. No, no, see, you no, did it to me. Great. Yeah, 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 you did yeah, it to yeah. me here. So, okay, so I know you, you have your- This is not like a, like a, not like a dysfunctional relationship, <laughs> bro. I don't know if it actually is it a dysfunctional Yeah, I don't know, maybe. That's my wife. You wash your car twice a day? We have quite a few cars, you know what I'm saying? Little never mind, never yeah, it's a little dysfunctional. Yeah, all right, all right. No, so you okay? He so has racing gloves. So you, yeah, 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 yeah. that's pretty. Who the fuck wears racing gloves? Right? It's a little, maybe a little. Just a little expensive ones. Just they were legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They match the car too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, enough of me. We already did. We already went through me. Right, you're right. You're okay. right. So you've got. Uh, you have that. That's your, that's yeah. that's centered around morning workout. But then you also have your 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 man purse here that you carry with all these supplements. Now, do you have those in little pill things, or do you just have a you know like? Because no, I always see you reach in there and between podcasts, <laughs> yeah. they're like you're always throwing. Yeah, you are right. Is he not always doing that? Every time I look over, so he's I, fucking taking. Yes. I, and I never really pay attention. Like, what is he taking? You the combination. Every once in a while, you throw me one. Hey, take this. I'm like, okay. What, <laughs> <laughs> what are we yeah. taking right now? In between a microwave meal. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the combinations uh, depend on what I'm looking for. So I have certain products, supplements in there. And I'll know, like, oh, I'm gonna, I want this. I want a little of that. Or I'm gonna help. Oh, interesting. See, yeah, I just yeah. assume that it's always the same thing. Yeah. No. Oh. No. Yeah, because I uh, anytime I've tried to be good about it's my AI supp supplements, so you, it this way. <laughs> yeah. Are you just like constantly seeking new feelings by doing yeah. all this, yeah. or avoiding feelings, Justin? Oh, if wow. you really want to get deep, wow. that's I, probably I, what's I happening. I didn't know I was going to turn. <laughs> oh, my drink started coming out of my nose. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to be real? You want to know the truth? I forgot, I forgot my armchair <laughs> here. I, I try to avoid my a lot of therapy. Really, I'm really not the guy to open up to about this. I started realizing that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, wow, that's too real. That's got too real. 
<laughs> honestly, it's still, honestly I'm still ob- obsessed with workouts and the stuff that's centered around workouts. So like, if, like yeah. right, totally, I'm, I'm working out at a different gym now and I think about I mean, the equipment that they have and I'm like the combination of them and I'm going to do this and that, you know? So I can connect a little, I can connect a little bit to that. I was, yeah. I mean, do you remember me when we were meeting, when I was training for getting com- in, like competitive shape? You oh, remember? Yeah. I would meet with him, and yeah. I was I felt like that where yeah. I was just, I was so he was geeking out on like every new thing. Was, yeah, you know, I would come yeah, in, but, I would, my, but yours was for a point, like a purpose. Well, yeah, <laughs> mine is for the hell of it. Like, what yeah, am yeah, I doing? Yeah, 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 no, I'm not I competing. That's why. I, I mean, I can kind of get it because yeah, I understand that yeah. the obsession of that and tweaking all that yeah. stuff. Well, we all have Dude, that in look common. This vein. Yeah. Well, all of us kind of have that in common. We have uh, this obsessive side. So we'll get into something. Yeah. I get like that with topics. If I start mm-hmm. getting obsessed about a topic. Oh, I, there was like a there was like a, a two year period where I got into physics. What? Why? I don't know. I just got into physics, and there was another like <laughs> well eight year period I got into economics just for some reason. Yeah, and I read these books or whatever, so I can get very obsessive. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. We all have that. Maybe we all have that. And do yeah, you yeah, is I it? Uh, I mean, I know we were laughing about it, like avoiding or whatever that, but is it therapeutic in a sense to you? Of course. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think you get lost in in your obsession. And everything else kind of melts away. You guys feel like that, right? Yep. It's that when you're like you're so present because you're in your focus that I love that. I think that's mm-hmm. such a, I think it's a, such a healthy I thing for yeah. a, someone to have. Like that's why. Yeah. I mean, what made me re-engage and do this going so full circle, like the car foam talk again, is like uh, I I was losing that. Like again, I, I I reached a place where I didn't need to wash any of my cars, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. paying someone else to do it, and then I felt like, man, I was missing out on something. How funny is that? Like I yeah. I wanted the labor back. I was I like, know. Yeah, you yeah. know, I I that's an awesome. That's awesome though. Right? It's like, yeah. hey, I worked really hard to be able to. I mean, I, and it really was that. It was a bit of me like being introspective and thinking back to like being childhood, right? Like, and I try to do this, like where I have these moments where I just stop when I'm by myself and kind of just trying to be grateful for mm. the work Dude. that I get to do, the, yeah. the things that I've caught. I mean, there was a time when I was a, a 16 year old boy when I said things like, man, if I could just have that or just do like, yeah. I did and it. Now you have it. Yeah, yeah, I have it. And so, and then, and then what I outsource cleaning it now. It's yeah. like, damn, like that part of that. I remember That's as a kid thinking about, I would take such good care of it and I would be like thinking. And, and now I'm like already, eh, you could take care of it. Like, no. Yeah. Like, so there was a part of me that was, was, was get, getting that back. Doing things yeah. for the sake of the enjoyment of doing it. I think is an awesome thing. Yeah. I had a moment kind of like that, but it was like mainly just watching my son uh, and I had told you guys a while back, like he had met some of these neighborhood kids and they kind of started their own little group They call it like the super sports bros, SSB. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, it's SSB yeah, they, time, yeah. you know? And like, so he just reconnected. I think they had like a falling out like, like months back, but they just got back together. And so, uh, they're back at it. And, and what's great about it is they're the ones that do the, um, walkie talkie and, oh, and, yeah. and then they, they move one. Uh, to one person's house, they play there, they come back like before dinner, you know, when it gets real dark and all the parents are kind of privy to like where they're at and all this kind of stuff. And I sent a video to you guys yeah, of when, yeah. so I, you know, oh, in yeah. front of my house, there's this little patch of, you know, like artificial turf and they just decided to do like a pickup uh, football game and they did like basketball, they do football and then they did like awesome. tetherball and like everything was like rough. You know, it was like, and and I, I had a moment where I was like, I was out there, like, ooh, well, because I have these other kids here, like, I don't want anybody to get hurt, and you know, like, kind of coaching them mm-hmm. on like how to be careful and this. And I'm like, dude, what am I doing? Yeah. You know, like, I didn't have that person there, like, oh, watch out, yeah, oh, don't go that hard, yeah. oh, no, you're gonna get hurt. Yeah. And I was just like, I. Like, Let them figure it out. And so I just started like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. cheering for him and stuff. And then I would, I like removed myself and I was just watching from the kitchen, you know, through the window. And it was just amazing to watch them like, you know, they, 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 you know, do something really rough and get kind of hurt, but then they kind of brush it off and then <sighs> they're just still cool. And nobody's getting upset or angry great, or anything. Great it's lessons. just like, wow, like this still can happen. I, you know? I was, I hope you really appreciate you know, what you have fostered yeah. with, with those boys, because that's not common, as, as a young, as a, as a yeah. dad who is a young kid right now, who's raising in this time right now, one of my biggest fears is that my son doesn't even want to do those things. Yeah. So I think about that a lot. And, you know, you've really fostered that at the house and, and to be able to sit back now at the age he's at, where it's not like you had to go tell him, go play football or go do these things. Like he gravitated towards that. That's such a it's, cool thing. It's also the group yeah. of kids. Like that's the hard yeah. part, dude, is finding kids that your kid jives with that wants to do Seriously, that. Seriously, dude. Yeah. And yeah. it's harder these days because 
we used when we grew up, we always grew up with neighborhood kids. Mm -hmm. Kids now make friends with kids that live far away or whatever. Different schools, yeah. everything. Yeah. It's, yeah. So it's it's really difficult. I mean, I, like when I was a kid, I would just oh, go outside, yeah. and there were the neighborhood kids. Yeah. Even if they weren't the ones I went to school with, there were always the neighborhood kids that we would, you yeah. know, hang it, out. It is it is different like that yeah. for sure. So that's I mean, I hope you appreciate that. That's a really oh, yeah, that's no, a really I cool. But I, try to take a moment really to like take it in and be like, yeah, this is great. Do you, I mean, you guys remember the games you played uh, growing up? You know, we used to play we would play tackle full tackle football. Of course, yeah. no pads or nothing. We're yeah. just and it was raining out too, Rain, yeah. which was like oh. boxing. We yeah. get boxing ruined, gloves and we box each other. I ruined my first pair. My grandmother in fourth grade bought me my first pair of Jordans, and they weren't even a week old. And I went out <laughs> and played knee football in the mud. Oh, and destroyed them. Like that's what happens when you get a four a fourth grader uh -huh. shoes like that. They're probably just not ready. Now, for, did you know what you did when you came home? That sounds like a, you know. When I think move. back to it, like I can I remember that whole day. And I you know what it was. I love those shoes so much. So I, to wear I wanted uh -huh. to wear them everywhere. <laughs> That's your only thought process. That's exactly yeah. what I thought. It was not like, oh, I need to take care of these. It was like, I love these so much. And I was so proud to have them. I wore them everywhere. Them. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, then you go. And then I, what I did was I went down the hill. So I lived up on this hill out in the country. And I went down the hill to the neighbor's house. And it was after a super rainy day, all muddy. And we're like, let's play new football. And it was like, yeah, good idea. It wasn't like. I put them on going like, oh, I'm going to go play knee football in my Jordans. You know, it was like, oh, yeah. they were my favorite shoes. I'm going, And then it was far enough away where it didn't even dawn on me. I should probably go back home and put crappier shoes on. It was just did it. And then, of course. Little I, kids are like that. It's like, yeah. They like something and they'll be like, can I wear this every day? <laughs> it makes like, no to sense when this? I think back to it. Like, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. like, you but, weren't. You were just a kid. You were, yeah, you but mom. totally destroyed them. I when, destroyed Jessica, the when Jessica was little, so they didn't have a lot of money when she was a kid. And her parents bought her like these, these like Minnie Mouse, you know, nicer kind of glass glasses frames mm -hmm. and she was uh when she was there as a kid when they were picking them out and the guy selling them was like oh these are really strong frames you could like stand on these and they wouldn't even break so when she went to school she told the kid she's like you could stand on these and they won't break he's oh, like God. no they'll break and then she goes no they won't so she put them on the floor the kid stood on and broke her glasses so she didn't have glasses for a whole year oh god they couldn't afford oh, to buy man. another oh, god. <laughs> brutal <laughs> Because she thought, I mean, that is. That that's just, what the guy said. I right? know. That's like how I think that brain works at that yeah. age. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't even, don't even process it's that. so funny. Yeah. Dude, I got a, uh, a quote for you, okay, Adam, that I want you. I think, I thought immediately Adam would like this quote. Okay, it's Plato. Here. You know what Plato was, right? Yeah, yeah. Philosopher. Let's see if I've heard it. He who does not desire power is fit to hold it. Oh, I love mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like that amazing we, that wisdom. I mean, we just know. I mean, we've said that, I, we've yeah. talked about this before. I don't know who said it after him about like the the ones that should be in power are the ones that don't want it. Right. Yeah. So that's probably it's probably derived from that yeah, original because yeah. he goes back further. Isn't that interesting? Like the people that like seek it so strongly and make a whole career out of it. There's something wrong with that person yeah. that wants that so bad. It's fundamentally wrong. We should not let yeah. them have it. You, know? <laughs> you just reminded me something. <laughs> Do you know that? Remember, I told you guys that the other day. I, I would. I actually was going through our YouTube comments, and I tell you not. Like I told you, it ruined my fucking day. Yeah. yeah. And I told you the whole Gen Cohen thing, and then I saw another comment someone made about. Remember when I brought up that comment about like, what do you guys want to be remembered as a father, or yeah. what are remembered as when you when you like die and stuff like that yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and like yeah. somebody uh -huh. like talking about how narcissistic I am because I said I want to be a good father. Like, yeah. <laughs> what? What is it? <laughs> like fuck you. Like seriously. Like first of all. Every, we don't have a choice. We're known. Wow. Okay. Millions of people listen to this show yeah. every single year. So where there's no getting away from being known. So what I want to be known for is being a good dad. <laughs> like, I'm not like seeking for other, and that's what they, they, the way they positioned it was like, I like, they're like, why don't you just go be a good dad yeah. instead of like wanting everyone else to know what a good dad you are. Like you can do both. Like you, fuck you, off, bro. Yeah, like dicks. really? Like that was not the point of the exercise. That's not the worst comment. The worst comment oh, I ever saw yes. was, one of our old YouTube videos was me demonstrating exercise. Weak chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, weak. That's the class. That's, that's all my favorite one. That's weak a good, chest. that's a, that's a like, funny come one. Come on, man. That's a funny oh, one. When people I've been working me. on that forever. Yeah, that's hella Come funny, on, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so just, bad. man, toxic place, I tell I you know. what. It's like, man, you can't have, you can't have, an, oh, I can't have a real dialogue with you guys at all without being fucking oh, judged by somebody, terrible. you know what I'm saying? Staying off that fucking thing. No more. No more going on that thing. No more. Hey, I found some other, another cool thing. You guys want to guess what the longest sanctioned fight ever was? Longest boxing match. Ooh, ever. Uh, 20, 20 or 21 rounds. Uh, is that right? No. What about you? What do you think? Um, remember, well, remember bare no knuckle. They went forever. No, this was this was 1913. So think of the times. Oh, uh, <laughs> so this is it to the death? They don't even have yeah, they, was there was say, a point when it was you boxing was like 20 24 rounds, hour right? it, fight. Well, this so this this fight happened in 1913 between Dick Highland and Ray Campbell. 
It lasted 110 rounds because neither one of them. Bro, you, how is that possible? I'm looking so at the rough. picture. I'll send, they'll post it up. You, these guys, I mean, yeah. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. It was seven hours and 19 minutes long and it was declared a no contest. Later changed to a draw because <laughs> neither one of them. And they didn't like win any money quit. or anything. Because like, it was all like whoever gives up or no, the fight fights in those days, some of these fights were whoever gets knocked out. Yeah, 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 yeah I was it, gonna say it or someone out. gives up. Right? So nobody got paid? No. Wow. Hey, imagine like these guys like tough motherfuckers, yeah, right? Yeah. Seven hours? We are such pussies. Just, yeah. They just there it is right there. You gotta do the picture of the actual after the match. Oh, there's actually a picture. What was up with the guys holding the I always like, like I always like this pose. Dude. Yeah, like, I like that. Anyway, I'll send you the picture, but their faces are all destroyed. Uh, I have I have oh, I have yeah. something for you guys. Yeah. Trivia. I, thought, I came across wow. this. I thought it was really interesting. Uh, this is um, most profit made in a single day by some of the world's largest companies. Any guesses on so, so this, profits this, or sales? Profits. Okay. <gasps> wow. Largest. Yeah. Profits. Single. So most profit. Most profit made in a single day. By some of the world's largest companies. Okay, I'm going to guess uh, one of them is Apple. Pfizer's the, vaccine. Oh, fuck. That's, well, that's force, isn't it? Okay, so I yeah, would... Yeah, well, Damn, that was a good one. Mandated. Man. I was going to guess Apple when they released one of their iPhones. What uh, a great guess. That is number one. Yeah, that's what I thought. Number oh, one is... Uh, number one... Which is, iPhone? It doesn't say that. It just says the profit. So Apple was in a single day, $376.8 million in one day. <sighs> profit, right? Uh, number two, Microsoft, two hundred and forty six point two million in a single day. Of course. Mm -hmm. Number three, Google, two hundred and thirty eight point nine million in Jeez. a single day. Number four, Meta, okay, Facebook, one seventy five point five million in a day. Uh, newer company, so Nvidia, one thirty five point seven million in a day. That's like one of the fastest growing companies right now, by the way. What's Nvidia? What is it? Yeah, they're all they're all the AI, the AI stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe you can look up who who is that is that a that's not a, a Sam Altman is it also Amazon one hundred twenty one point nine, uh, Exxon one hundred eleven point one, J P Morgan one hundred point nine, and then uh, Walmart yeah, and Visa the same round fifty four. I was actually surprised that your Pfizer wasn't up there. I would have yeah, guessed. Well, I don't think the I think there's some kind of qualifications at this. Yeah, part. dude, because yeah. they had guarantees. Because it was yeah all yeah. Yeah, that's a real. I don't know why I didn't even think. I didn't even think that that would or be, any pharmaceutical company. There's none matter. on here, so maybe it was just straight. Uh, huh. Wow, Nvidia. Oh, it starts with an N. I don't know. I thought it was spelled different. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jensen Huang. But yeah, I heard that about yeah Apple iPhone for sure, and, and they still like are crazy profitable, right? Like Apple every launch. Yeah. Oh don't yeah, they have one. Don't they have Apple some has of the, the most cash? cash? Yeah, they have the most cash of anybody. Yeah, they know they definitely. I, I heard that they actually stopped. They halted production on their car. Uh, yeah, they did. Yes. Completely. Yeah. Yes. Oh, did that you hear all move. the other companies that are back? Remember I brought up like, I think it was last year, when all the companies signed those deals that they would guarantee no, no more, which is why I got into the, buying the V8s and stuff like that I told you guys. Because, oh, they said no more. Because uh, by, yeah, by 2025, by 2030, all these companies said, no, we won't yeah, have any more yeah, gas. Yeah. All of them are taking back that. Really? Yep. yep. Almost all of them. I, yeah. There's only, I think there's only a couple of companies left that are still like, I mean, there was a couple of companies that said they wouldn't even agree to that. And then a lot of the companies that agreed to a cutoff date. Cause it wasn't, it wasn't market driven. Was yeah. it? No, it was all driven all. by it's, yeah, it's old false, yeah, false signals in signal. there. And they're looking at it. It's just like, this, it's not adding up. Was, okay. So, uh, did you see anything about the Toyota CEO? Cause he, came so Toyota out. was one of the ones that said they wouldn't do yeah, that. Yeah. He's just like, was like, no. Yeah. Like, they were, they were one. So that a lot of people, any production of EV. Yes. Yeah. They were one of the companies that actually saw the writing on the wall from the beginning and said, no, we're not agreeing, which is ironic because they were some of the I first know. to adopt it with the <laughs> right. Prius and things That's like right. that. Yes. So, which is, well, makes sense. maybe they're in early and they've That's saw why it. They, yeah. they saw, they saw yeah. that it's like, I mean, listen, how many people did the same thing that I did? I, it's still to this day, when I see it Prius, doesn't math it scratched yeah. my head. Yeah. So when I was, when I bought my Corolla back in uh, 2010, I think somewhere around that time. Uh, I went, the idea of it, I sat down one day, I got my report from Wells Fargo on my gas expenditure. I never paid attention to it. Mm -hmm. And I went, holy, and I was back then I was driving a lifted big old truck, right? Like probably eight miles to the gallon. Yeah. And I was spending $800 in, a month in gas back then. Mm -hmm. And I sat down and I did the math. Like, okay, how many miles is that based off mm -hmm. of eight miles per gallon? It's like, and then I went, 
oh, wow, if I drove a car that got 30 miles to the gallon or more, 50% of the time, I could afford a $500 car payment and still be saving still save money. Save money. Yeah. I literally went and bought a car the next day. My yeah. thought was, I'm going to go buy a Prius. It was a Prius at that time was 50, they were touting 50, 60 miles a gallon. Yeah. And then when I went down to Toyota, the Corolla was like 15 to 20 grand less than what the Prius it make, was. It didn't add up. And, yeah. and then it would take 10 years of driving the Prius longer than the Corolla before it made a difference in the payment. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, oh, well, why would well, we have bought like a 1980 something Civic? Those things are crazy. It's just yeah. ironic, like even the environmental things that uh, they were promoting. It's like you look into it further and it doesn't add up, you know, because it what's actually powering these vehicles to recharge them? Yeah. Yeah. It's fuel. Yeah. It's not, it's not batteries, yeah. you know, and also how do you discard the batteries? Yeah. Uh, they're, they're an environmental hazard. There's a lot and of problems. They're stacking up. There's a lot of problems. It's just, out. it's just like whatever we're promoted, it's all like this just It has propaganda. to be driven by the market and by innovation. And that's, that's going to do, that's just going to solve the problem the best. Otherwise we're going to be wasting a lot of resources. Okay. Uh, nuclear. Plus I now think, you give kill switch to the government. It's just like, uh, oh, yeah. did you guys not see that? Yeah. They passed that. Did you know? Yeah. Did you not see Ford? What? No. Oh my God, that was on my notes to bring that up. I can't believe I forgot to to add that to the notes. Look up Ford announces. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pull up the article oh, right now. I think I know. You're they about. they're the new models that are coming out. They're so this is how it's going to work. So uh, you miss a payment or something like that. Yes, shut off repo. your air conditioning. You're then if yeah. you don't pay again, shut off. Uh, no way. Yes, bro. To the point where I they s- shut it all the way down. Where yes, they repo it. I got yeah. it, dude. Here, here. It's yes, it's has has and they, they can repo it and drive the car back. You don't act, say. Hey, you know what? We, people, this is the deal. People, when you're making a car payment, you don't own the car. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. That's so people getting pissed off about that. It's just they don't realize you don't own the car. You're, you're well, yeah, I'm not. The bank owns the car. No, yeah, that doesn't concern me at all. Yeah. What concerns me is the yes. Here it is, right here. here <laughs> the it limitations is. that the yeah, government here might here impose. It is, right here, right here. Yeah. <laughs> drive away from them. Ford's proposal will force the car to drive itself to a repossession agency. Having the car drive away so would crazy, be a last dude. resort. The patent application shows Ford would first pressure delinquent owners by disabling some of the car's features like the air conditioning oh. or having the audio system play unpleasant sounds. Unpleasant I'm torture. Pleasant. Yeah. <laughs> Unpleasant <laughs> sounds. How do you like that? Your car tortures yeah. you if or you don't make a payment. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, ah. Or every, dude. Ten, every 10 seconds, you owe us money. Yeah. You owe us money. Dude, it drives away from you. You imagine you pull up, you get out of your car. Bro, could come, you imagine? Ah, hey, could on. you imagine you're on a date and you get your car <laughs> to pay your bill, pay your bill, yeah. pay your bill? Bro, How embarrassing you! Have you ever been that broke? When oh, you took a girl out you probably shouldn't have. Yeah. <laughs> what? What do you mean? Is that happened to you guys? No. Is that oh, happened to you? That happened to me. What happened? <laughs> oh yeah, I was. I came back from college. Did you pretend you forgot your your credit well, card? Well, I just something? like I thought. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't like, add oh, up. Shit. <laughs> and she looked at the menu. Yeah. You, you like the you like the hot dog, right? Yeah, like, no, I think I'll take yeah, the I steak. didn't add, add yeah, it all up. I had missed the salad. payment. Like I was broke, dude. Like <laughs> legit broke. And I and I just like was trying to like be sly about it. And I had gave her like two cards that declined. Ooh. And then oh, it was so bad. And then she just kind of looked at me. And then I finally got one. Like whatever I could scrape <clears throat> off of like these two ATM cards. That oh I finally, like, God. Made it happen. And then you know try try and like act smooth after that yeah. and like done <laughs> like yeah. no second day yeah, yeah no second day no second day <laughs> yeah but now look at you huh yeah, yeah. i bet you regrets it yeah, now yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. where are you now <laughs> isn't that crazy though about that i mean we talked It'll just about drive that. away from you that's hilarious oh uh, right. it says ford drops the attempt to patent tech allowing lenders to remotely meddle with cars I guess it's not very popular with the consumers. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, are yeah. facing increased. Scru- oh, so automakers oh, are facing scrutiny. increased scrutiny for their data collection and remote access policies for vehicles. I don't. That's di- this is, is different. This the last cry. So, like remember, I, I was telling you guys before that with all. So, insurance companies now are tapping into this, and it's like if you can, we can. If you have all these GPSs on all these cars, you can learn all the behaviors. Like, oh, Sal drives by the Seven Eleven every single morning at eight a.m. Uh-huh. So you're starting and with Teslas and things that are all hooked oh in. God. Think about how it's going to advertise to you. Insurance companies too. They were like taking advantage of that, right? They had like a thing you could put uh, on your car to basically show the amount of wear and tear and, and like how hard you're driving it and, and all so that then stuff. So you deducts, get like a lowered. Yeah. Have you guys? Have you guys not ever noticed how often I use Waz every day? 
because I, I have to go through traffic. And so is it I use, Waz or Waze? Waze, I think. I say I used to say Waze, and everybody corrected me and said it was Waz. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I whatever. I don't know. I do Waz, use Waze. it sometimes. Yeah. You know, tomato. About. Yeah, yeah, tomato, <laughs> tomato. Yeah, so, so if you, I don't know how often you use it. Pay attention next time you Waz. use it because it tra it learns all your normal behaviors and figures out like before I can even put stuff in, it knows what time I'm driving and knows where I'm going. Yeah. So it goes, oh, on your way to work. So your your, your nitro is ready. To and, and then and then it hits me on all my. It, it will advertise to me as I'm driving on the mm -hmm. road past like mm -hmm. Seven Eleven and stuff like that. It'll, it'll pop up with an ad for me to get like you know a uh, you know two egg rolls for two ninety nine or what oh. that so it's already you're already seeing it in apps they're trying to get it to where the cars it's all built into the smart car like that to where it'll be able to do that so yeah we're not that far away from that happening but that's what that what he just pulled up is more related to that than the the Ford thing that we first yeah I don't on. like <laughs> I don't like anyone having the ability to turn my car off no ever hell no I get it if you don't own your car or Bro. whatever but I don't know I don't like the government having that power that's, that's why, why I'm going all in on the uh, the old cars the old vehicles the ones that like manually you can go in there and you could put a new uh, whatever carburetor in there you can like yeah. you, you know you have some bit of say because <laughs> <laughs> if you do have any kind of computer they can yeah. hack in I it saying, doesn't even, even matter yeah if you just have to have like OnStar if yeah. you got OnStar, OnStar in the car like, like you're, they can, oh they can huh? yeah, yeah you're they can because OnStar can shut down your car that doesn't exist anymore do they still have OnStar yeah I mean, they, they, oh yeah all they put GM. in a lot of GM all the GM, all the GM models have it oh wow yeah yeah you may you may not have it activated and you're paying for it but you, they have access it's, to it it's mm. in there yeah. yeah if you like uh, didn't you see uh, was it Brendan who rolled his car rolled his uh, whatever and it, the OnStar thing started to go off because it recognized that his car flipped and everything like that yeah yeah so it's even though, even if you're not paying for the service that has all the a la carte stuff on it, you, they still have a GPS on you and they know where you're at. Yeah. You know what I forgot to mention is that what, one thing I have pieced together with the supplements, just going to go back for a second, is the one addition that I've noticed makes a big difference in my workouts is the LMNT. One full packet before I work out. Okay, so now is that, because uh, you're experimenting on it, is that something that is a consistent Now thing? it is. Okay. So I do a full, like a like a big, like what is that, 16 ounce, 20 ounce thing of water with one packet and I drink that before my workout. Mm. Way better. Now mm. I've heard you say too though that there's a lot of times that you'll do two a day. Is, is there- The second one's during the workout. Now is that also always or is that like dependent always. on- Oh, it no, is. No, it's almost always. Almost yeah. always. So I go one first, one before and then one during. But it makes a huge- just drinking a lot of water before you work out makes a big difference. Adding the sodium made a huge difference. Yeah. With the element too. Yeah. So. Well, I think especially, I mean, the thing that I think I've learned the most about the electrolytes and the sodium and all that with us is that, and I really pieced this together back in the competing days, was that when you eat clean whole foods and you're you eat like that, you eat yeah. the cleanest out of all of us probably. And you just don't get that much. You don't get nowhere near what you get when no. you eat out all the time, like yeah. the normal American diet. So it's like when you switch over to dieting and getting in shape. If you work out, you need to add it's sodium. Something to th uh, absolutely, that everybody should probably. Well, be I've doing. noticed even too because I've been trying to drink more water because I've been getting headaches sometimes, and and notice that if I do add a bit of vitamin T and uh, some sodium, it does help actually reduce my. Have you seen chances the, of Have you headache. seen the data on sodium uh, supplementation and migraines? Uh -uh. Makes a big difference. Yeah. Positive one. And you get headaches pretty regularly. Right? Yeah, I do. You get them yeah. every week? Uh, yeah, every <clears throat> week I'll get at least one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I remember when I pieced that together and I used to do dill pickles. So I used to keep dill yeah. pickles in, the, in there. And if I started to feel headache coming on, I go crush That's it. That's the one thing I never get. Headache? No, I I, I can I, can, I might get oh, one worse, every man. five years. I do at the most. You know what gives them to me is when we're in here for a long yeah. time. Mm. When we when we're in here for a long time, a tension headaches. With, I yeah, that's how I get I get that. Like well, I, I have, my teeth are. <laughs> I mean, there's a whole lot going on. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you just chip on your teeth? Yes, my tooth. How did like, you do that? I have to get fixed. What I don't know. I don't know. Like you just woke up. I don't, I don't like even that? know if I'm like sitting and just. <laughs> I, don't, like, I could be doing that. There's like, a good chance. That's I have happening. no idea. Like you guys don't even tell me nothing. Like, dude, hey, relax. Bro, your if face. you're clenching, I'll tell. <laughs> I'll Wait, tell you like clenching. say something. When you know, did you like, notice when you woke up, or was oh, it like my, halfway through the day? No, it was like when I noticed when I felt like a sore on the bottom of my tongue. I was like, oh, what is this? And then I come back, and then there's like this jagged spot that's literally stabbing uh, oh my, God. my tongue. And so, so, so you swallowed the other piece probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I ate it. And it's probably, it's probably good for hey, just as that <laughs> calcium. Remember, remember never ending story. The yeah. rock monster. You remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. You know? oh, it's my favorite. God. It's my favorite clip that we did about him. When we were talking about oh, we that. Did, so, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Back when I made fun of him as to his old teeth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, I don't want to forget. I want to, yeah. cause I've been meaning to give you a hard time about the cyber truck. Yeah. Right. Because they're all over now. You guys yeah. seen them all over? I've the seen place. a couple of them. They look they're yeah. uglier in person. Yeah. They they're, look wild. They're popping up. They are. And you know, do you hear the big uh, pushback right now on them? What? 
because we just had all this rain that come through, they rust hella easy. Oh, uh, no. Because they're it's... steel. And so if you don't pay for it to get wrapped or or protected or what like that, like that wow. shit's rusting. It's and bulletproof. It, and looks, rainproof. Look, yeah, look up look up uh, cyber truck and rain. That's all you got to Google. It pops oh, up everywhere. Oh, no. Yep. And, I'd be well, hella mad. That's a problem. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So you have I to- mean, didn't they learn that? From, didn't DeLorean go through that whole thing? It's like- so uh, it's it's wait that, isn't it stainless steel? Doesn't stainless yeah, steel not it, rust or is it still rust? I mean, well, it's, uh, obviously it does. Finds a way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah really? you, did you did you pull up? Did you type in what I said? Yeah. So it seems that they are rusting in the rain, but there's uh, some details here I need to read ahead and see. Just pull up pictures. There's all propaganda. kinds of stuff. It's, yeah. been, it's propaganda. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean the wrapped ones actually look better. I think. The black the black wrapped one that I saw Looks was sick. cool. Yeah. You know what I like? So it's an oxidated layer. I don't think it's really rust. It's stainless steel. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's like a... All right. Because I feel like... I feel it's like, like it a surface sort of... Um, uh, so, just, so your car just look rusty, but no. it's not really... Hey, rusty. so I, I saw one on the freeway. Awesome. Yeah. I saw one on the freeway punch it. First off, it's big. When yeah, you see it in person, they are big. I haven't seen them, any of them move. It's a, it's a big, yeah, it's tall. Big. It's big. Oh, yeah, I know. It's big. Well, like what if is that it? runs into I, you, you're, you're It's gone. like it's six or 8,000 pounds, something like that. Oh, okay. yeah, it's massive. It's huge, dude. Yeah, that's, and so I saw one on the freeway hella big, and then I saw it take off. That thing, man, it moved. Did you hear the numbers on his, the his what, his next Model S or whatever that's coming out? No. Or the, uh, no, is it the Model S? He talked about it on, Ro or on Rogan again, uh, the, too. The coupe? The the new the, the next sport one that he's building okay. it's like zero to sixty in one point two seconds. Wow, <laughs> that's gonna and, so and, and supposedly that's like the least interesting thing about it. It's supposed to be like crazy. I know he's I think he's been talking about it for like a year or two. And it hasn't it hasn't it, came it's out. It's been yet. like two years uh, delayed or something, right? Yeah, 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 I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Sixty six hundred pounds. Yeah, oh, wow. that's he wow. that's heavy. Yeah. That's heavier than our cars for sure. Is it? Yeah, yeah ours are six sixty two or sixty four or somewhere yeah, or something like know. that. So that's a that's a that's a big heavy car. Interesting. But I don't. I mean, the what I'm seeing is them them popping up, and I guess the the stainless but, steel doesn't rust. By but. the way, did you guys learn this the other day? Did you know if your company, if you as a company buy or lease a car and it's over, I want to say six thousand pounds, with someone in there, they even let you add a, a passenger. If it's over six thousand pounds, it gets a special deduction. Yeah. As a commercial vehicle. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can do that already. Yeah, you know that. I do? Yeah, you do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's there how you go. have one. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <it's, laughs> I just show up. <laughs> just show up with my supplements. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's it, bro. <laughs> show up optimized. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. who we got to who we shout out today. Yeah. Who we got? Who gets sent some love to? Mm. Huh? Justin had somebody. I did. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I have someone is in, and you know what? Because Sal hasn't watched it yet, I'm going to shout it out to our audience. Is Octopus uh, Murders Murders on yes. Netflix? Okay. I, I tell you we're what, we're going to talk about it the next episode. Yes, we're going to be. You have to watch that this coming week, Sal. Because focus I'll on do that. my best. I you may you may catch me wearing a tinfoil hat now. Really? Yeah, that's it's, how. Oh wow, it's very. That's revealing. how much of an impact it made on yeah. me. Really? Yeah. So like it's like it's like a big deal. Yeah. Oh wow. yeah, yeah. It's tangible. Evidence. Yeah, yeah. Let's just put that. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. Are you interested in learning more or potentially using peptides? Things like BPC-157 accelerates healing of tissue, including collagen and joint health. Or what about TB-500 uh, or thymusin beta? Helps with recovery of muscle fibers and other tissues in the body. Uh, what about growth hormone releasing peptides? Or how about GLP-1 agonists like semaglutide? You might have heard of it through the brand name Ozempic. There's a lot you can potentially benefit from by using peptides, but you want to go through people who know what they're doing. You want to go through some doctors. By the way, our partners at mphormones.com, they also do hormone therapy, but they also work with pretty much every peptide you can think about. So go to mphormones.com, fill out a questionnaire, work with the doctor, get a prescription, and take your results to the next level. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Juice Tasty Soup. What is the best exercise for posture? Posture. Okay, so someone listening may think there's an obvious answer to that, but the truth is, now there's exercises that are probably better for most people's posture, which we'll get to, but the truth is when you're talking about posture, this is an interplay between a lot of different muscles. You have obviously the muscles of the back, the muscles, your glutes, which hold you up. You have your hip flexors, which oppose the glutes and keep your pelvis in a nice, you know, position. You have all the muscles of the core. Like all these muscles have to be in the right balance with the right stability to give you what would be considered good posture. By the way, good posture meaning 
you hold yourself upright nicely, you feel comfortable, you can move uh, with good mobility. So that can vary from person to person. Mm -hmm. So that's the the big answer. Now, the more specific answer, most people, some type of a of a row probably would help them because most people have forward uh, shoulder. I, I was going to say a, a mm -hmm. more generic, uh, broad answer, but pretty applicable to everybody would be the entire posterior posterior chain. driven yeah. exercise. because yes. we're we're so anteriorly driven meaning we do everything in front of us right nobody yeah. does anything back here right nobody works with their hands or their feet back behind them and so all those muscles on your backside are just underworked in comparison to the ones in the front and so basically everything that's part of the posterior chain is going to support your posture for 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 most people right, right? I, I think yeah. that's a, like a really good like if you're a trainer asking this question or you're just a person who's trying to figure yeah. out what are some exercises i can do to support my posture posture posterior chain yeah. movements and rows would be included in that you know your uh <clears throat> there's so many rear delt flies uh, uh leg, leg, light line leg curls will do that glute bridges are that hip thrusts yep. like deadlifts. these are all yeah, deadlifts these are all movements and you'll know by the way if you mm. do an exercise first off doing an exercise doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get the benefits of the exercise. You have to do the exercise properly because you could do a row, for example, to try to get the shoulders, to, to strengthen the muscles that hold the shoulders back. But stay rolled But you forward. could do it in a way to where your shoulders stay rolled forward and you actually strengthen the poor posture. So you have to have really good technique. Typically, you want to go light if posturing is, is an issue for you because otherwise you'll you'll go to your, your normal recruitment pattern or, or you'll revert to what your body does best. So go kind of light, get good technique, good form. And then here's a here's a, a telltale sign that you're doing the right thing. When you do when you do it, stand up. Yeah. And I see this with clients. I say, stand up. How do you feel? I'd be like, oh my God, I feel so good. You yeah. just feel a lot better. I mean, the closest you are to um full extension, I would say, you know, like fully erect posture, mm -hmm. uh, the better. And then that's the again, the posterior chain exercise can reinforce that in order to kind of keep everything. Uh, balanced uh, yep. from being over dominant in the front. One of my favorite tools, I believe we have a YouTube video. I don't know what it's titled. Maybe Andrew can find it, is the PVC pipe. Oh, yeah. Uh, because it, using that as a tool that you went to your point, when you're doing any exercises, learning how to hold yourself upright in that good posture position is half the battle because you can do movements to Sal's point that are designed to support your posture. But if you do them improperly, you actually only, you just exacerbate the problem. Yeah, so you yeah. don't even make it any better. And it's supposed to be an exercise. So it's important on how you do the movement that you're in a good in a good position. Now, I like the PVC pipe too, because it, it also <clears throat> cues the head. Yeah. So yes. one of the, one of the play, one of the areas that people often miss or trainers miss with their clients is posture with the head and the in the in the top of the spine, the cervical spine. Mm -hmm. So like a good exercise is like giving yourself a double chin. And you'll notice a lot of people have forward head because they're on the computer so much or because they're on their phones <coughs> yeah. or whatever. That and makes a big externally rotated shoulders. You yes. Know, pulling those back. Makes a big, so the PVC pipe is cool because it connects to the skull, then the upper back and the and the tailbone. And that helps keep everything in line. Next question is from Jonathan Sash. What are the benefits of a renegade row? There are Distinct benefits to a renegade row, but I will say this: nobody does them for the benefits. No. I've never seen anybody do a renegade row for anti rotation. For the yes, that's it. <laughs> Everybody does them because they look cool and hard. Yeah, you know. And I think some celebrity did them or something. Or, you know, started doing them on social media. Everybody thought this looks like a cool. So exercise. You're doing a regular row. Check this yeah. out. Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> it's not for that. Yeah, yeah, at all. It's not. It's not a super great. You know, developer of the back or the biceps or the shoulders or your core. What it does is it works something called uh, anti-rotation. It works on your ability to resist rotation during movement, which is very important for spinal st stability, uh, especially for athletes. Yeah. So this is, and I, and when you see people do this, it's all it's always to fatigue, and they're always doing it. Yeah, like it's some like it's some it, kind of you're not of the set up to do this with heavy weight either because no. you just don't have the leverage in that position. Uh, so if you're wanting to actually like build muscle, you know, you need to, you need to do rows. You need to do things that are actually like, I can actually load this substantially yeah. and gain the benefit of that for like a muscle building purpose. But when you're in that position and um, you, you're really just considering bracing the core and yes. keeping everything from rotating. 
I've never really been a fan of the Renegade Row. Yeah. It's not it's not an exercise I like like to, because to the point Justin made about anti rotation. There's other ways. I to can do get it. great anti rotation benefits from a regular row. Sure. You just keep yourself in a fixed position. There's like two ways to do a row that you see online that that some camps think one's right or wrong. It's not. One of them is focused more on anti rotation. One of them incorporates rotation. Mm -hmm. Right. So the difference is like you'll see someone do a row where they let them shoulders roll forward and they open up and they oh, as yeah. as they're rowing Actually, and then you have other ones that, that stay in a very fixed position while they do you it. Just that's, the scapula move. Yeah. Now that's yeah. anti-rotation because you're not allowing yourself to rotate and move, which is the benefits of the renegade row. I can load that substantially more because my feet are planted and supported with my knee on the bench. Mm -hmm. And so if I want that, those properties. So I've never really cared for the renegade row that much. It's gotten popular, I think, because it's hard. Yeah. It looks hard. cool. Yeah. It's hard. So it burns a lot of calories because yeah, yeah. when you're you're having to plank there's, out, there's minimal value to it. There, there, well, there it's is. it's actually a really good anti rotation uh, stability exercise for for ground uh, fighters, grapplers, because of the position. Now mm -hmm. it's not an explode. You're not going to develop explosive power with this or lots of strength, but it is it is a good movement to help develop stability. So when you're in that position, go real slow and controlled. And the idea is to <clears throat> not let your torso move. But row the weight while supporting yourself. Yeah, I was trying to think of a client who, like, maybe someone who's a uh, um, who loves to do surfing. Who who would I who would I who would I have that I would use that exercise over other exercises? Just like a, a grappler, maybe a surfer, maybe a but grappler. really it would be it's just the way to add variety to to anti rotation because I think there's better exercises for most. Yeah, people. me too. Yeah. I think I think it's such an overrated move to do. And it, again, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have some value, and I can't find value. And maybe if maybe maybe I would introduce it to a, a client who I've already done all the other ones yeah, with, yeah. and it's like, hey, here's a cool anti rotation challenging exercise mm -hmm, for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially if maybe I've been talking to the client a lot about, you know, pelvic stability, core stability, and teaching them how to do that with other challenging things going on. Like I can see the value in that, but for the average person, I mean, this is, to me, this is a classic example of like, and when, when, when I'm this deep into my exercise library, like <laughs> we've done, <laughs> we've done a lot of other shit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? We've already covered a lot of the bases. If we're down here, you know, if we're messing yeah. with an exercise like this, you're just really looking for novelty yeah. at this point. If yeah. programmed properly, there's some value, but yeah, it's, it's, it's overused because it looks cool to the consumer. And so you see a lot of media, social media, people presenting it as this like great exercise. And then as a consumer, you're looking at, Oh my God, that looks crazy. It looks tough. Yeah. That's why it got popular. Next question is from Susie Grace Lopez. What cues would you suggest for dumbbell rows? I feel them in my traps. Yeah. So two cues I like a lot is take your shoulder blade and put it in your back pocket. So you're squeezing back and down at the same time. And then here's another cue that I learned years ago as a kid, which is pull with your elbow. That one always gave me better connection and my clients better connection to rows because when I tell people to pull with their elbows, they're less likely to pull all the way back and get this forward shoulder when they're focusing on yeah. the elbow. A couple of things I want to make clear. One, your traps are involved in this. So it's not wrong to feel your traps. But right. the most common thing when someone feels it more in their traps than anywhere else is they're, they're shrugging up. up. Yeah. yeah when you shrugging. row in, what you're doing is you're doing this. Yeah. You're shrugging up. And the cue of retracting and depressing first, yeah. which also the tall chest. Okay, here's here's a here's a here's an example too of where like this is where like coaching can make all the difference and and like again on the internet how we that's wrong this is right like if you see me do a row you see me take the row through full range of motion i'm gonna i'm gonna flare out my lats and then i'm gonna come all the way in you're gonna see all this kind of movement going on when i first teach a row to a client i actually keep them in a very fixed stationary position i don't want any movement i actually don't even want them it's to too roll. much for them to you're teaching control first exactly yeah. it's too much going on there i want to teach them in this they're going to sit in this upright position retract and depress like you said and they're just going to just drive yep. drive the elbows back like yeah, you said yeah, yeah. squeeze pinch the pinch my finger in your back squeeze the elbows and i want i'm going to keep them in this very fixed position right. until they learn what they're supposed to be engaging then I'm going to progress them to teaching them how to, okay, now that you understand what muscles we're working and engaging, now I'm going to let you take this through full range of motion. And yeah. now let's try and con stay connected to those, those muscles by, while you do that. By the way, it's easier to learn how to do a row properly in a seated position than it is in a bent over position. So like For bent sure. over working against gravity. dumbbell row or barbell row, yeah. if you don't have, if you don't have good you connection to, brace to proper really posture, good. it's yeah. going to put you in bad position. So I would always start people on in a seated chest supported yeah. row or a seated cable row before I ever had them do, Absolutely. you know, uh, you know traditional barbell row. Next question is from Guy Pettigrew. 
What are your favorite landmine exercises? Justin, you really, um, yeah, I've been your, playing with your these a lot. lot. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the one that we've programmed probably the most uh, is, you know, going to be a trunk twist. And um, I just like that because uh, there's not a whole lot of um, devices or, or exercises out there other than like a medicine ball where you can really get that kind of loaded rotation mm -hmm. uh, and the cable, for instance. But uh, just because it, it kind of takes a lot of the the harsh gravitational forces of like the vertical forces down. Uh, it, it's just, it has a really nice feel to it. Now, my favorite exercise though, to use these now that I've really been experimenting with, uh, which I wish I would have known before training athletes was doing uh power clean or yeah. clean and jerk. And it's so explosive, but it's, it, it has that element of safety, control yeah. and safety. Yeah. And, and it's got everything you want as a coach. And that's because one end of the barbell is, is, is anchored into the ground. Yeah. yeah. So you're not going to lose it. Can't, it. can't get away from you. It's yeah. not, it's not, yeah, it's not getting away from you. The technique of it, uh, you can learn it in a day. I mean, it's, it, of course, you're not going to load a lot initially because you really, it is dynamic. It's very dynamic, but you can get that explosive fast twitch. Uh, movement at a, at a in a safe controlled way, yeah. which I love it. So I lo I love the kneeling shoulder press, which is, it, it, it's yeah, similar to like awesome the Viking too. press. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love the Viking press for my shoulder. I remember when we call. first found the Viking press, so I was like, oh my god, this became one of my favorite mm -hmm. uh, movements for the shoulders. And you get that similar feeling in a kneeling position with the shoulder press on the on the um, landmine. So that's one of my favorite. Yeah, I like I like I've never trained cleans on it, but just watching it. I can see that the skill acquisition required to develop power from that movement is so much less required than a traditional clean, which is, this is a challenge. Like training power, you know, as a trainer, it, it's important you develop, you, you, you strengthen power for anybody. It's just now the, the, the challenge is how do I scale this back so that's appropriate for the client? But everybody needs to have an element of being able to explode or change directions because that's just life. That's how life is. Mm -hmm. the, the challenge with some of the best exercises for that uh, especially as people progress is like, okay, now we're going to do a, a hang clean. Well, it's going to take us six months to, mm -hmm. to, to learn how to do this properly before we can develop power with the landmine. It's like, like you said, like, you know, as long as you're fit and there's no major issues, like you learn the movement and now you can start training power right away. And then you see that you reap the benefits of it. So look, if you're a hard gainer, you have trouble building muscle, you can't put on weight. We have a hard gainer guide and it's totally free. You can get it at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano and Adam is at mindpumpadam. 